Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and spring bass fishing is right around the corner. So today we're talking about the top five baits that every angler should have with them in the spring. We all know that spring bass fishing can be amazing, but knowing that and knowing how to catch the fish or having the tools to catch the fish are completely different things. So today I said it's the top five. It's sort of the top five. I've got the top five moving or reaction baits and the top five finesse or slow fishing baits. So a total of 10 baits, depending on your style of fishing, because some anglers power fish, they wanna keep moving. Other anglers prefer to fish slow. So depending on which guy you are, I've got five for you. Let's start on the power fishing side of things. Five categories of baits. And if you're not familiar with these videos or how Tactical Bassin operates, Below every video, there's a video description. You might have to push the three little dots to open it up. You might have to push something else to get it to pop up. But below every video is a description where we'll put everything we talk about. So every bait, we'll have a link to that bait on Tackle Warehouse where you can go look at it. We'll give you our favorite size, favorite color. If there's rigging components for it, we'll give you all the components just to make it as simple as possible. So first one, you might have guessed from them in my hands, is going to be a shallow crankbait. For the most part, a square bill, although they don't all have perfectly square bills, but a shallow crankbait is incredible in the spring. One of the best baits for covering water, catching fish, and catching big fish. Now, I've got three different styles in my hands. Here's the, the short version of a long story. The colder the water, the more I'm going to lean to a flat-sided square bill like that guy, the Spro Little John 50. The flat side just does exceptionally as we're coming out of winter, going into spring. Water temps are still cold, but fish are pulling up into the shallows. That is the style of bait you want to be throwing. As that water warms up a little bit more, then I switch to more of a traditional shaped square bill. The River to Sea Biggie has been my favorite bait for years. It's loud. It's obnoxious, makes a lot of commotion coming through the water. That cold blooded is hands down my number one color in the springtime. I've caught so many big fish on this, I've lost track. Other end of the spectrum, we have this guy, which recently has been, I've just fallen in love with it. I mean, I hate to keep calling baits my favorite bait, but I mean, I've caught so many fish on this thing and big ones. This is the Rapala OG Rocco. This is a balsa bait, completely silent. Rattling, the biggie rattles, the Rocco is silent. Night and day difference. The other difference is that the Rocco has a remarkable startup speed because it's balsa, which means in the springtime, I don't just throw my crankbaits out and just wind them back. I like to burn, pause, burn, pause, twitch them, pop that rod tip and get them to react. If the water's murkier, I'm going rattling. If the water's clearer, I'm going balsa, I'm going silent. That bait has a remarkable startup speed where I can throw up shallow around cover, bump my way through it and do a lot of starting and stopping. And it just has these tight little movements that just get bit. But number one is some version of shallow crank. Number two, chatterbait. Keep it really simple for you. If you're fishing bigger bodies of water, I throw the jackhammer. Now, there are some different options on color. You've got stained water. I'm either going to throw a black blue or something really bright, really bold. If I'm fishing a fishery that's got smaller bait fish or it's a smaller body of water, I'm pond fishing, I'm on a reservoir that tends to have small bait fish, I go down to the little mini max. And the clearer the water, the more natural I go. But a jackhammer, 
with a spunk shed. That's a jackhammer half ounce with a 5.5 spunk shed on the back of it. You just can't beat it. That's my number one hands down. But if you need to downsize, that Mini Max is a great little option. Number three, jerk bait. The jerk bait is an incredible springtime fish catcher. Jerk baits, you can do so many things with them. You can trigger reactions from fish that are aggressive, that are chasing. You just work it fast by them, they come out and plow that thing. But on the days that they don't want to eat, you can work these baits and then let them hover and sit over the top of those fish. And a fish that doesn't want to eat also doesn't want that in their space. And the longer it sits, the more likely they are to come up to it. And the next time you twitch, they commit to it. So the jerk bait is one of those baits that can catch them when they're aggressive, but it can also catch them when they're in a bad mood and they don't feel like feeding. Next one is the lipless. The lipless is another one of those baits that can do more than one thing. We spend a lot of time chucking and winding, burning a lipless. If you're on a shallow grass fishery, burning that lipless through the grass, ripping it clean can be an amazing way to catch them. But the colder the water, the more likely we are to take that lipless, throw it out, let it hit bottom, and do that slow pull, let it fall back to bottom, pull, let it fall back to bottom. We get our biggest bites that way. But the lipless, again, another remarkable springtime option. It doesn't matter where you fish, that is a bait you wanna have with you. They're amazing for fishing hard bottom reservoirs, hop and bottom, but they're also amazing for fishing super shallow grass, burning and ripping. So many different ways to fish them. And then last is the A-Rig. This is our tactical flex rig. Uh, the A-Rig, mimics a ball of bait and it does it better than just about anything else in existence and it just flat catches fish it's incredible again much like a square bill we work these baits aggressively a lot of ripping twitching popping we're not just steady reeling that a rig we work those rods a lot to get that school this is called the tactical flex rig we're ripping and popping that rod because when you do that, the whole school tightens up like a real group of fish and then opens back up. And when they do that, those fish think that they've been busted, right? The bass are following along, that school tightens up and starts to run and they just lash out and eat them. So with any of these baits, some different retrieves, more movement, being more aggressive can get you a really big bite in the springtime. That was about as quick as I could possibly fly through that. Again, in the video description, we link everything. We'll give you a favorite model, favorite colors, the trailer for the specific bait. So we can save a lot of time by doing that. Now on the finesse or the slower fishing side of things, because again, not everybody wants to power fish. Some guys just want to go fishing and I can't argue with that. Number one, is a Senko. If I could only have one Senko to fish every day for the rest of my life, it's that one right there. Five inch green pumpkin black flake. It's not the best Senko for every situation, but it's a really good one for almost every situation. I buy so many, I mean, I carry tubs and tubs and tubs just of green pumpkin black flake when we travel because it's that bait you know you can turn to and you never know when you're going to get on a wide open bite with it. You can wacky rig it, you can Texas rig it, you can Nico rig it. There's so many different things you can do. Uh, but more often than not, I put that on a three aught wide gap hook, Texas rigged and just go, just fish it weightless. It's a great option as bass pull shallow and they're really staging up. That's a great way to just reach up into that shallow cover. One thing you'll notice, a lot of these baits I'm talking about now, the lipless and the jerk bait, they can get snagged up on you. Uh, so can the A-Rig to some degree, although we fish it up, but a square bill and a chatter bait, my main baits for covering water, those are baits that are extremely 
weedless. You can run them through almost anything and they won't hang up. And that's important because this time of year, bass are so shallow that if you get hung up and you have to go get a bait, you can spook them out of there. And bass in the spring, they're not used to being around boats. You get around a shallow water bass in August, he's been seeing boats all year. That fish does not care that you're there. He knows how to just back down in his little spot and wait you out. But a springtime bass that's just come up out of deep water, they're starting to think about spawning, they're up there looking for food. When you run them over, you bring a boat up in that shallow, a lot of times those fish will blow out and they don't wanna come back. So weedless baits, baits that won't snag up are really important. That's one of the keys to that Senko. I fish it weightless, three-aught hook, lighter line. I'm never gonna snag that thing up. Uh, the next one is a shaky head. Fish a shaky head worm. The T-Mac by far is my favorite worm. If you guys have watched Tactical for any length of time, you know I'm fanatical about a June bug colored shaky head worm. But in the spring, I am fanatical about baits that are a green pumpkin base, but they have some type of blue in them. Uh, I think that that just represents a bluegill. At least it does in my mind. That's where my confidence comes from. But that little bit of blue in a bait all through spring just seems to get bit better than the rest. So that is tilapia magic. In that same T-Mac that you'd see me throwing in June bug in the summer, tilapia magic in the springtime. Uh, the drop shot, another killer option. The drop shot is not a bait that you will see me throw every day in the spring. You will see me throw it in the spring when the conditions get really tough. When the fish get lockjaw, they shut down, they don't want to eat, that's when I'll pick up a drop shot. And I fish it very slowly up against cover. So if your lake has docks, dock pilings in the water, standing timber, hard cover, rocks, something hard that on the bad days, because not every day in spring is beautiful. We've got some rough days that come in, big storms come through, you get post frontal afterwards and those fish lock down. Now, the interesting thing is they tend not to leave. If they're in the shallows, they tend to stay even after those storms. They're not gonna go anywhere, but they're not in an aggressive mood. So they tend to pull right up to hard structure or hard cover and they'll just sit there. Those are the days when I drop shot. This specific bait is the lollipop. That is a bait that's neutral in the water, which means it wants to sit flat in the water. A lot of worms, if you actually look at them underwater, if you stop working them, they go whoop and they just hang straight up and down in the water. Well, a, a lethargic bass is not going to eat that. You want a bait that will really sit flat for as long as possible so you can give it minimal action and then just sit. So say you're fishing dock pilings, you can pitch to a dock piling, work it, and then just wait. Just let it sit there. And if it's sitting perfectly, much like a jerk bait, those fish know it's there. And if it stays in their zone, you give it one more bump, let it sit again, that little bump, that's all it takes to get them to commit. So in the early spring in particular, not all drop shot worms are created equal. You want a drop shot worm that will suspend really well in the water. It'll make a huge difference. Next one, Ned Rig. And if I'm just taking one shot in the dark. If I could only have one bait for the spring, it's that original, the Z-Man Finesse TRD Green Pumpkin. That little guy on an exposed head will just get bit again on the bad days. The days where you know the fish are there, you were catching them last week, but now everything seems to have fallen apart. Grab that Finesse TRD and just barely, barely bump that thing. There are a lot of Ned Worms that we like, a lot. Some have more movement, some come in unique colors, but day in and day out, if you just need a bite on those rough days, that Green Pumpkin Finesse TRD, there's something about that one that just gets them. And then last but not least is a jig. Now, saying a jig 
is like saying there's bass in the lake instead of giving you a specific spot. Jigs are a huge category. If I could only have one half ounce pitching jig, Arky style head. If you're a reservoir guy, you can still fish it. If you're a guy in a grass fishery, you can still fish it. If you're around rock, you can still fish it. Wood, you can still fish it. That's the benefit of that style head. So a half ounce pitch and jig, that color is called Go To. Magic Craw is another really good color, but I'll tell you what, that one right there, Go To, half ounce will work everywhere, every day of the entire year, not just spring. But one thing I'll do is when I grab a trailer, so this is a D-bomb, but it's green pumpkin, blue flake, just like I told you in that worm, whether it's magic cross swirl, whether it's green pumpkin blue, I just really like a little bit of blue in that bait. And then with this style of trailer, I always take the first few nubs off. It's just a confidence thing. I've done it for years. I thread that guy on there and it's just a little more compact, just a little, but those trailers don't stick out quite as far, those claws, as they would if I didn't do that. It's a very compact, very tight, perfectly balanced jig. Green pumpkin, brown, that little bit of blue. I'll take that jig to any body of water anywhere in this country and fish with confidence all throughout this all throughout the the year but that blue flake in there springtime is just the deal guys that was as fast as we could fly through that spring is an amazing time to be on the water that was a bunch of baits but not if you break it down by style you know how you like to fish do you want to cover water do your fish get right up shallow well, then your choices are really simple. If you're the guy that doesn't want to do that, you want to take your time just fishing down the bank, I understand. There's some great options for you too. Again, we'll link all this stuff down in the video description to make it as easy as possible for you. But get out there this spring. There are a lot of fish to be caught. There's a lot of big fish to be caught. Some of them have your name on them. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.